In this video, we will discuss how to define and assign joint patterns using the SAP 2000 program. So joint patterns are primarily used for assigning temperature or pressure loads to objects. This feature allows description of more complex distributions of temperature and pressure over the structure. So I'll show you how to do that in this specific model. First, we'll go to define joint patterns. Here, we just give the pattern a specific name. In this case, we will use hydro. We will apply soil pressures to the height of this wall. Next, under assign joint pattern data, let me show you how to actually define them. I'm gonna bring up an image here to illustrate it a little more easier. So we have a couple options. We have the XYZ multiplier method, as well as the Z coordinate at zero pressure and weight per unit volume method. Let's talk about the differences between the two. So using the XYZ multiplier method, you can type in values in the constant A, B, and C as you edit the boxes. The pattern value at each selected joint is calculated as shown here, AX plus BY plus CZ plus D, where X, Y, and Z are the joint coordinates of the selected joint in the current coordinate system. So these units of constants A, B, and C are all unitless. So in this case, you can see once we enter in the values for A, B, C, and D, you get a distribution of loads along the height of the wall based on these specified parameters. Now, if we select the second option, Z coordinate at zero pressure and weight per unit volume, let's take a look at how that differs from the first option. Let me give you an image here that shows exactly uh, what is being done. So what's the difference? So once you type the Z coordinate and weight per unit volume values in the edit boxes, you can also select a restriction from the drop-down list. If needed, check the added uniform value per unit area checkbox to specify an added uniform value per unit area. So the specified Z coordinate is assumed to be in the current coordinate system. So let's take a look at how these are exactly calculated. So we'll specify the Z coordinate, the Z coordinate of the selected joint in the current coordinate system so you'll need to put in the specified weight per unit volume as well as specified added value per unit area. Type in some values here. So for the restriction, there's three options. Using all values, zero negative values, zero positive values. Also note, that positive and negative values restrictions can be specified individually for each set of Z coordinates and the weight per unit volume in the summation as well as for the final calculated pattern value. Okay, so those are the two options. So once this assigned joint pattern data has been defined, we need to actually assign it to the area objects. Okay, now that we've defined the joint pattern, let's go ahead and assign it to the area object. We're going to select all the areas and joints and we'll go to assign joint pattern and now we'll click apply and as you can see the loads have been assigned directly to the area objects as you can see the pressure is greatest at the base and smallest at the top of the wall let's go ahead and run this model now If we go to display, let's go to show element and load assigns. Here are the values, if we zoom in a little bit, here are the specific values being assigned to each specific wall element. We can take a look at it for surface pressure values or contours as well. As you can see, highest pressure at the base of the wall lowest at the top as expected. 